Welcome back. We have a project video today. And of course, naturally, we've got a photobomb kitty right in the middle of it. Um, he's probably going to be here for the duration because he's just purring up a storm and he seems very unwilling to go. But hopefully we'll get through it by working around him. We'll be back in a minute. project today, if we can get to it, is we are taking apart a lamp for parts. Now, I know you've heard me talk about doing this, and you've seen me using some of the parts that I've scavenged from other lamps, but I thought it would be a good idea if I showed you how to do it and gave you some sense of what I look for in a little Franken lamp like this. So, let's begin with this. He's sleeping on the cord. This, as you can see from the shape, here I left the price tag on this. This was $3.99 from Goodwill. As you can see by the shape of this, this is called an S uh, cluster. And it's called a cluster because it's more than one socket. So this is a socket cluster S type or S socket cluster. Um, and you may sometimes hear it as S socket. But the thing that, oh, thank goodness. I didn't know how we were going to get through that with him in the middle of it. The thing to keep in mind is it's about that S. Now, oh. When we first take a look at this lamp, um, the first thing I noticed was it's heavy. I haven't taken the felt off the bottom, so I don't know if the base is weighted or if this is just genuinely heavy metal. It might be. Um, in any case, the lamp has parts. And if you take a close look, look at the way these pieces are not lined up. These are separate pieces sort of fitted onto the pipe um, like sleeves. They're just sort of sleeved onto the pipe that runs the length of this lamp. So in addition to this S cluster, which is frankly what I bought it for, we may get some other parts. And as I say, unless this base is weighted, heavy metal, good quality parts. So, when I start uh, putting a lamp together, I'm sure you've noticed, I start from the bottom and work, to my, work my way up. So, when we take it apart, we're doing the opposite. We're going to start at the top and work our way to the bottom. The first thing, okay, we're back. The first thing we're going to notice is we've got a little piece of threaded pipe here at the top. I'll show you this. Oh, there we go. This is called a nipple. And they come in all kinds of sizes. And I don't want any smutty giggling. That's really what they're called. Um, the purpose of this is it goes into this little threaded hole at the top. See there? And then a piece like this. And I've shown you these before. This is a shade rest. It has the quarter inch hole here and the eighth inch screw here. So the quarter inch hole fits on our nipple and the eighth inch screw fits into our finial. So that would hold the shade on top because obviously um, without that nipple, there's nowhere to put our shade. Now, frankly, if I were doing this, I would drop a washer right on top of that um, finial rest. Well, it's called a shade rest, actually. I would drop the washer on top of that. 
just to be sure that that little opening in the shade had, um, had a good platform to rest on. Now, in all likelihood, you would be able to secure it, tighten your finial. This, by the way, uh, is a piece of junk finial. This is actually plastic. I just grabbed the first thing I, I my hand fell into when I stuck my hand in my finial box and it turned out to be a crappy little piece of plastic. I don't even have an interesting finial to show you. Huh. So we're taking this off. The nipple will go into a little uh, container I have that holds nothing but these. I've probably got a couple dozen of them. They really come in handy. Um, and they're in different sizes. This one is about uh, an inch. Um, and I have them up to maybe four inches. Past four inches, I really don't consider them nibbles anymore. I consider them um, pipes with threaded ends or fully threaded pipes. So once we've got that off, this little S cluster Boy, this is what we are going for. Now, this piece, the reason I bought it, as I said, is this piece. And the reason for that is uh, I've priced these. They run between $12 for inexpensive and not really heavy, but, you know, lightweight, um, I don't want to say cheap, but I'm going to say cheap. Pieces right up to like $50. These are expensive. And this is a nice one. These, um, it's pull chain, and I really like pull chains. Uh, the little balls on the end, uh, the, these are genuinely magnificent little balls. Okay. All right. If my channel is still on the air tomorrow, I will be really surprised between this and the nipples. Anyway, let me gather myself together. A good judge of quality is how heavy the little balls on the end are. And these are heavy. And you hear that click, click? That's nice. Now, I'm going to take, this is the top cap off. And I'm going to start pulling on this because they did not do what I do, which is tie a knot in here so that you can't do this. So, well, maybe they did. Um, wire caps. Very nicely done. Now, I'm going to shove this cord through a little so that I can twist off these wire caps. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Uh, again, that's a quality piece. Um, they don't have to put wire caps on it. There are many other ways to do it, and this is one of the more expensive ways to secure the wires. So, there is my little piece. And when I put this back together, I'm going to be able to wire my central wire, just like this, right into these two wires. And these two wires, it's actually four wires. It's two sets of two. Two wires, one coming in from each one of these. And remember how we did that. Um, black, bald, brass. And then, of course, the other one was white, ribbed, or silver. And we are going to match it up. We know how to do that already. Um, I don't like the fact that we're not going to be able to put a UL knot in here. We, we really, I don't know if we have the room to do it. We're going to try, but that's a project for another day. This is our little $3.99 part that would otherwise have cost us up to $50 somewhere else. Good deal on this. Here's the piece I took off the top. It's just a little cap. 
and I'm going to stick it right back in here so that I don't lose it. And remember, our nipple went into this cap. Oh, and I should also mention, let me just hold this up again. See how this goes? And then we have the nipple here. We've got a, a one inch nipple. And that raises the shade, the top of the shade up to here. I can replace that nipple. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't connect to anything. It's just a loose piece of pipe. If you take it out, you're not touching the wires. You're not touching anything else. You just pop it out. And you saw I did that before I began touching the wires. And I told you, you get these um, in any size at all. In fact, I have a piece of threaded pipe just like this that is three feet long. It's sitting in my umbrella stand right now. Uh, so obviously at three feet, I could cut off any amount I wanted. Why would I do that though? What if I wanted to put a much taller shade on this? Bring it up three inches, four inches, six inches even. And that determines the top of the shade. So if I want a small shade, I'll stick this right back in. But if I want to go for a more impressive shade, I'm going to go for a much larger nibble on the top. Alright, next thing we're going to do is we're going to start disassembling this and let's see what we got here. Alright. asking myself if I might not want to get a pair of pliers. Usually this is the sort of thing you can do with ordinary household tools. Um, what I have here with me right now um, is a pair of scissors, a knife, and a screwdriver. But I may in fact need to get a pair of pliers. So I'm going to pause you for a moment. I'm going to get the pliers. I'll get right back to you. Okay, well, I got the pliers, and it turned out the top end of this lamp wasn't going anywhere. So I decided to work from the bottom up, and I took the felt off and took the cord out. With the cord out, I can start taking the bottom apart. And yes, it was weighted. So... This is an interesting little piece. I don't know if I really want to save it for anything. It's, it's a piece with a very specific use. It weighs the bottom of a lamp so that the lamp um, is heavier. Now, uh, the weight of a lamp is important in terms of its ability to sit on the table comfortably, but also it gives people the impression that they're getting a more expensive piece when they buy it. So let's take our bottom off. And we have another weight. And this is the base of our lamp. Now, as I said, these were just put on like shoving your hand into a glove. This piece, I don't see much point in saving this. Um, I might want to, if I were going to cut it down, use some of the pieces, but it doesn't really seem likely. This isn't a style I work with very much, and the photobomb kitty has finally decided to go. Ooh. So we get to work without a tail switching in our face. Um, this next piece, however, Got some nice washers. That's good. And this little sort of, um, I'm going to say this is antiqued brass. It might even be bronze colored. It's a nice little cap piece. This is the kind of piece I could put on top of a vase cap to transition into a thinner rod going up. And then we have, oh, we have this, and uh, this, 
I'm not sure what this is, but let's find out. Okay, this is actually just thin metal, and we have a piece in here. It's metal, too. It looks plastic. This is something I'm probably not going to save. Now, if this were somebody's style, if somebody liked this style of lamp, all of these parts could easily be saved and reconfigured into another lamp. This, however, is a nice, thick, cream-colored plastic tube. It looks like it's yellowed a little over time, and it will probably clean up very well, though. I will save this. I can use this as uh, a socket cover for, you know, the style of lamps. They, they, they have little sort of fake candle bases. Perfect. And who knows, that might come in handy. But it's small, it's light, it can live in my lamp parts box. It's not going to really annoy me if it's there and not used. This is another little um, cap piece. It looks like a washer, but actually the edge is rounded over. And you can use these in combination See, like that. And those come in really handy. Now, the reason I wasn't getting anywhere with this uh, screw washer is because it looks to me like it might be rusted on. However, this is a nice piece of pipe. Not especially versatile. It would be versatile if it were threaded all the way through. It's only threaded on either end. So I'm probably going to put a little work into this to see if I can get that off. Um, maybe soak it in Coca-Cola or something. By the way, that is what I do. I, I soak metal parts in Coke. Um, and it doesn't have to be Coke. It can be generic. It can be Sam's Club Cola. It doesn't make any difference. But uh, I don't know if you ever did this when you were a kid in high school. You throw a steak into a pan of Coke, and three days later, it's like literally gone. The Coke has eaten it away. Well, it will do the same thing to rust. So I am going to be able to get this thing off, I'm sure. And then I have another piece of pipe. Um, and boy, you can never have too many pieces of pipe. But as I said before, the main scavenge out of this batch was this beautiful pre-wired, all set to go. And this is appropriate for a much larger lamp. And in fact, that's my plan for it. This is going to go on a lamp that will eventually be uh, probably about two feet tall. Hmm. So that, that was definitely a good bargain. The rest of these bits and pieces, the nuts, the washers, I will save. Uh, I'm even going to save the wire caps. I'm probably going to put them right back on our little S cluster and use these same wire caps when uh, I rewire this to a new lamp. The cord, um, let's take a look at this. The cord has a tag on it. Um, Caution non-polarized plug. Um, nevertheless, it does have our ribbing on one side. Remember, we talked about this. The two wires that are fused together, one side is ribbed, the other side is bald. And remember that that was part of our brass bald black. That was the mnemonic we used for how we wire together. The section of wire that has the ribbing on the edge, we set that aside, um, mostly because we don't have a mnemonic for it. It's the only reason. The bald side is going to go to a brass terminal or our black wire or another 
bald wire. In the case of this, the wires in there, one will be ribbed, one will be bald, and we're going to match them up. So, and of course, as long as you have black, uh, black bald brass, you know anything that's left over goes together. So white ribbed silver doesn't have to match up. It's just that's what's left that goes together. And that's how we do our wiring. Now, why is this important that we know how to take a part away? Well, for starters, as I say, I just saved myself as much as $50 because that is literally what these cost. Go check it out. Yeah, it's anywhere from 12 to 50. This is good quality. We've got our, our heavy little baubles here. Notice I didn't say that again. Huh? I'm not anxious to get my channel shut down. It's a nice brass. Um, this particular piece, I would say, was probably in the uh, the 20 to 25 dollar range. Uh, not low quality, but not really high end. Nevertheless, four dollars for a twenty dollar part, and it's a twenty dollar part that I need and would have otherwise had to go out and buy. So that too is the important part, because if you go out and get a whole bunch of $4 lamps to scavenge parts that you don't need and you don't intend to use, it's really not much of a bargain, is it? No. But given the fact that I already have a lamp for this to go on, this was a buy. And then the rest of it, the wire, um, non-polarized, I will be able to use that for something. Uh, am I going to put it on the lamp that I'm making? No, probably not. I'm probably going to want to get a separate cord for that lamp. Um, I'll set this aside. I'll use it for another project. But the lamp that I will be working on is going to be uh, more of a high-end lamp. So this, this was not a high-end lamp. And we found out when we discovered the base was weighted and it was not really heavy metal. This is just, this is not cheap junk. So I don't want to give you the impression I think it's cheap junk. This is fairly well made. As I said, the wire caps were in there. This S cluster, those, that's the mark of a good piece. But really high end, fancy Fifth Avenue lighting store, no, no, no way. So. It always pays if you find a good quality lamp. Now, what are you looking for? The first thing you're looking for is a good socket assembly. I look for threaded sockets. Um, they call these UNO sockets because they are threaded for UNO lamps. And this is, a, um, this is something that literally goes right back to the 1930s when they were screwing shades directly onto the sockets for hanging lamps and for floor lamps using the UNO shades. I like this. Now today you can get sockets that are threaded or sockets that are bare um, and it's just, just sort of plain, no threading. I will always go for threaded sockets if I can find them. Uh, and there are two reasons for this. The first is that it, it frees up your options. Now, I realize there's no way I'm going to stick an UNO shade on a, a configuration like this. Of course not. Uh, I might, in other circumstances, want to do something like this. But the other thing is the threading makes this end uh, a lot more substantial and durable. It's much easier to bend a, just a plain piece of metal than a metal with these crimped threads in it. You can really kind of squeeze on that little butter without doing much harm. So it produces a stronger end. And I don't know if you can see from the cardboard, the cardboard that's sticking out is, um, it's a little rough, it's a little worn. And that's something 
that uh, your the end of your socket can get a little worn, a little frayed, a little bent out of shape, a few dings. Harder to do it with a socket like this. So you want a good quality socket assembly. I go for that first and foremost. After that, I look for lots of little pieces like this. I want something that's rather intricately turned in appearance, but I want that appearance to consist of several little pieces, like if these were little separate pieces, mm, that would be ideal because then I would have more little pieces to throw into my box and the pieces would be very versatile. So that's another thing I look for. I like pull chain lights. I find them very easy to use. Um, I don't like the pass-through switches. It's with a little button that sticks out one end and you push it through and you turn it on and off that way. That is very useful for very small lamps, but I don't think it's a good idea on larger lamps because you're pushing that lamp backward and forward and it's just way too easy to push it over. So that's not something that just turns me on. And maybe that is just a personal preference, but it's something I look for. I do have a small lamp that this is going to be a future project that is going to use one of those little pass-through switches, but it's very small. That's why we're using it, because that's good for small lamps. So in general, I want to see some nice parts. Uh, I, I especially want to see quality in the circuit or uh, the socket assembly. Um, I want to see something good, something useful. And then I will grab it. I will take it apart. Oh, another thing to look for is the cord. This is non-polarized. And you can tell, remember, a polarized plug, one side of the plug is bigger than the other. This, they're both the same size. Polarized plugs, those are more expensive. You see a lamp with a polarized plug, it might be worth picking up if the price is right. Okay. So that was our disassembly of a lamp. I'm going to take many of these same parts in a couple of weeks, put a lamp together using the same parts. So you're going to see how it works. But if you have lamps in your home, if you see a good buy at the thrift store, don't pass it up. Grab it, take it home, take it apart. I'm sure there are lamps in your home right now you're not crazy about. They're probably a wealth of parts. And let's face it, you know how to drill into a vase now, so you know how to make your own lamp. Okay, before we sign off today, let me just say that the giveaway period for entering the contest is over. So that is for the Dinky Love Soap in that wonderful little... Um, Seductive Angel Soap Dish, and Karen's Bracelet, which was the Watch Face Bracelet. So, over. The Photobomb Kitty is going to be selecting pictures. He's sound asleep now. You know, he's tired of bothering me. Just, I don't know why he couldn't have stayed here on the table and just slept quietly instead of playing with my lamp parts. Cat drives me crazy. So, he will be picking the winners. And if you've entered the contest, please, next week, look for your name. Because the sooner we wrap up one giveaway, the sooner we start in on another. And I have so many giveaways lined up right now. Um, and come on, you know, you don't want to turn me into a giveaway hoarder, do you? No, of course you don't. Because there are just so many pretty boxes around. So... Collect your prizes quickly so we can get on to the next one because we don't want the giveaways to start backing up. Okay, tomorrow we are going to do another one of our series of um, disaster preparedness on our airport plan. And I'm doing an additional video on Tuesday. 
I know I don't usually post videos on Tuesdays, but since we're all stuck in the house with nothing better to do, I'm posting some extra videos. And Tuesday, I think I'm going to finish up on the uh, the Emmitsburg. Um, we The last place that Jocelyn and I went was Emmitsburg, Maryland. And so I still have half of that Emmitsburg haul video to show you. And that's going to be it for a while because everything is closed. There is no more buying for us. Not around here. So we're just going to have to find other things to do together. All right. Have a great day. I will see you tomorrow. Uh, as I say, we're going back to the airport plan videos. We'll do a haul video after that. We'll try to keep it lively and interesting and mix it up so that it's not same old, same old every day. All right. See you all tomorrow.